Robinson with Dan Weber here for USCFootball.com. Day 14 out of Howard Jones. And once again, the story today, Dan, was injuries. Randall Telfer will be out four to six weeks, will not be participating in the spring game. Down to one tight end on the depth chart. Exactly. You got you said it. I don't think there's much more to be said after that. That uh, that was kind of the news out of today. We did see Devon Flournoy in a in a in a sling for his left left arm. Not exactly sure what we're looking at there. Uh, he was the one that of the 2021 20, or so that went out on the rehab group. He was the one that just jumped out at me just because, uh, and we didn't see Randall here. He, uh, I guess, surgery was at noon today. But Devon, I hadn't seen him in a sling before. So you know they're going to be down to one, uh, one tight end on uh, on Saturday. So as Lane said, that'll uh, time for some creativity. Uh, asked if. Uh, the media had any ideas uh, uh, how he would do that. I think uh, he said, you know, you're still going to see the same, you know, the, the stars are going to make plays. And uh, he said, we'll probably just have to take a little more time in between plays, maybe not run, you know, run everything as fast. But uh, but they're not letting it get him down. I think that's really good. I think last year there was such an emphasis on injuries in a way that kind of got everybody down. The thing I think they're, they're learning here is um, you're going to have injuries. You just have to figure out a way to play through them or play around them, and, uh, and they're doing that. Uh, I was kidding with Sua Cravens. I had written down in my notes, I said, here he comes, you know, just a week after surgery on his knee, doesn't even have a Band-Aid on. And I looked under, and he had a one skin-colored Band-Aid on, <laughs> uh, on his surgically repaired meniscus. And I said, daggone, you ruined my notes. And he said, well, you know, I just, uh, just wanted to cover up my stitches. One thing we won't see, what we saw today, was Lane Kiffin actually playing a little bit of quarterback out there with uh, Trey Madden. He threw a nice ball, one one uh, touchdown ball that he threw in uh, kind of service team against service team. Uh, and uh, I, I was really, really impressed, you know. Uh, but uh, I think the thing that was fun to watch was watching Trey Madden in the uh, Wildcat. He is a load. I mean, he, you remember a few times with Tyler, and, and he was just, he got ahead of steam up, picked a spot, and, uh, and mostly, you know, he wasn't going to throw the ball. And uh, uh, he, man, Madden can throw the ball and did throw it. But, uh, but uh, he will be a load uh, running Wildcats. So that's fun to watch. Uh, I thought he looks like he could go, you know, full go if he really wanted to. But uh, yeah, I think they've got the Wildcat figured out with Trey. And back to the real quarterbacks. Uh, Lane, Coach Lane Kiffin said nothing about the depth chart. Said still pretty fluid with between Max Brown, uh, Max Whitick, and Cody Kessler. What do you think you're going to see out of those guys on Saturday? Well, I think the you know the emphasis is as Lane keeps saying is you know uh, timing, accuracy, uh, you know decision making, and don't turn the ball over. I mean, just flat out. And I think that's been a big part of, uh, as he said, every Saturday. They've really had good Saturdays, not turning the ball over, not trying to do. I think Max Whitick just said, you know, just take what's there. Don't try to do something that's not there. Don't try to throw that ball between two guys if you think, oh, I can squeeze it in there. Uh -uh. And as Lane said, uh, uh, the stats the last three years in the Pac-12 almost exactly reflect turnover margin, almost exactly reflects records. Oregon, Stanford, uh, USC's in the middle. Uh, and um, as he said, USC, you know, got a lot of interceptions last year, but they didn't, uh, they weren't able to hold on to the ball. And uh, uh, so I think what you're going to see are quarterbacks really trying to just take what's there, not force anything. As Coach Kiffin said, USC's been 25 and 13 since his tenure, and a plus one turnover margin. But unlike last spring, you know, Matt Barkley, you know, threw a lot of interceptions, but these quarterbacks have done a really good job of keeping the ball out of the defensive back's hands. I think, you know, that, and that's, as Lane said, that's the emphasis. Yeah. That's got to be the emphasis. Uh, you know, they, they benefited very little from, you know, more than doubling their interceptions last year. And, uh, and that just, <laughs> can't do that. And on, on that side of the ball, Lane uh, did mention that the defensive back's uh, depth chart is still pretty fluid right now. He even made a, a little crack about how Nelson Aguilar and Marquis Lee would be the two best corners on the defense back. Uh, should they actually you know, go there? Well, you know what? It's more than fluid. It's non-existent. There is no depth chart. Although, you know, what we saw today, Kevin, Kevon Seymour is back, and he and Anthony Brown looked like they were lining up with the first team with uh, Demetrius Wright and Josh Shaw still at safety. But... Uh, but yeah, as Clancy Pendergast said, I'm just giving everybody a uh, similar number of reps and we're just gonna see, uh, you know, but we're, we really do not have a depth chart at all uh, in the secondary. 
Great. Thanks, Dan. On behalf of Dan Weber, I'm Will Robinson. Log on to uscfootball.com for more information.